in the article, you also talk about how drinking is sort of a signifier for, um, you know, almost your feminism and empowerment was somehow yeah. tied to drinking. Yeah, I start when I was writing the essay, I at first was going to do a little research and tie it back to like the flappers. And then I was like, well, I don't really feel like doing this. So I just didn't. But but the but the flappers, when they drank and smoked, it was considered a marker of feminism. Um, you know, I'm old enough to remember Virginia Slim's ads that were like uh can't remember what that, the tagline was, but it was like this feminist thing that you were smoking. And I think drinking has become the same thing. Um, and it's basically like we can do the same things men can, which yes, we can, but although men do some really stupid things and yeah. maybe we don't want to always repeat them. But I, I also felt like, um, yeah, like I really just wanted to explore like what it's like to live in that kind of culture where you are so the expectations on you are so relentless. Mm -hmm. And to your point, it's not just tech, it's, you know, law, it's sales. I've heard from people in virtually every industry, parenting is a competitive sport or mothering is a yeah. competitive sport these days. Fathering, I think you can still kind of freestyle it. Um, it's, but you know, you're just, there's no good way to be a woman. And I think yeah. I actually said that in the essay. So you just end up driving yourself crazy. And what are you going to do but self-medicate? I mean, I, I kind of don't blame people yeah. for turning in that direction. Well, and I know I did. And I think that a lot of women as well are sort of some combination of, or women who drink, like people pleaser yeah. slash overachiever. So yes. you drive yourself I think you said somewhere that, you know, you basically are tricking your nervous system with alcohol to tolerate things you shouldn't be tolerating or you're not built to tolerate. And we do it to ourselves in some extent because of the pressure cooker. Yeah. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy um, because I think that if you're drinking at problematic levels, your performance is going to suffer and you know as a as an employee as a parent in life and so you actually are going to start creating some of the the problems you're trying to medicate yeah um, and you won't know it because you're trapped you can't see what you're what you're doing um i think in some ways i think if i'd been in like an overtly sexist environment like a coal mine or something i mean i'm these are you know you i'm thinking back to those old movies like norma ray where it's like women can't do this i would have at least had something to fight against but tech these days is very focused on the myth of meritocracy um and the idea that data is gender blind um and so there was a lot of i think unintentional gaslighting going on where women at Amazon are sort of made to believe that it's really just them. It's not the system. Um, it's, it's really, you know, it's just data that it, or it's just must be science that women are only a quarter of the managers at Amazon. Like, I guess that's just, you know, it's gender blind. Um, and so you start to go crazy because you buy this, this idea that if you were just better, you'd be achieving what your competent but unexceptional male coworkers are achieving. Yeah, I I totally get that. And um, one of my favorite parts, which is sort of the the beginning of Anjali, Anjali, is when you talk about being the one one woman on a on a panel with three <laughs> men for interns. And mm -hmm. how you actually said, you know, and, and I get this because I, I know a lot about Amazon's culture. Or it, <laughs> yeah. I, I've heard a lot. But, yeah. um, you know, they ask you, you know, I've heard this is a tough place for women. And you said, if you're tough and persistent and thick skinned, you'll find your way. I have. And then mm -hmm. all the men jumped in and tell me what they said. Yes. So they basically all said that I was wrong, um, that it's actually a great place to be a woman. Um, and so they basically said I was wrong about my own experience. And I was lying, by the way, or I was being extremely diplomatic. Extremely I actually kind. kind of, <laughs> yeah. I kind of wanted to say, you know, if you're bright enough to be an intern at Amazon, you can probably get a job anywhere you want. Look elsewhere. Um, but, you know, that wouldn't have gone over very well. It would not have gone over very well, and it was not my job to do that. Um, they told me that that I was wrong, that Amazon was a great place for women, and the evidence they cited was things like, well, I have a woman on my team, and she gets along with everyone. 
Like, okay. Or I have a woman on my team who went on maternity leave and she came back. And like, this is the bar for like, Amazon's a great place for women. And, and finally one guy, like all three of them had to jump in, of course, um, said, well, you know, this data is gender blind and we run on data. So we can't have sexism essentially. Yeah. It's a meritocracy. So right. you'll be great even though women are, are jumping out in droves and, you know, all the right. things, right? Even though they're basically, you know, start out, I mean, Amazon's demographic data is public, you know, like at lower levels, they're 50-50. And then as you go up through the, to the manager level, like women fall off a cliff. Um, I guess that's just how science made it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, the problem with meritocracy is that somebody has to decide what's measured and how it's measured. And it's very hard to do that in an unbiased way. Um, uh, absolutely. I mean, there are some startups here in Seattle that I read about that are rewriting job descriptions because yeah. all the job description at higher levels use words associated with men, even though there's, there's all this evidence that women are often better leaders in some areas right. and produce higher, you know, higher profits, higher results. Mm -hmm. And yet you know, just the words used almost by default are words that men use to describe themselves. It's, I wish I could remember the name of the company doing this. It was, it was, it was run by, a, is run by a woman who had worked at Amazon briefly. Um, and my last team at Amazon actually used the software product. And it was fascinating because it wasn't just words like aggressive that, you know, I mean, I could have looked at that and said, let's yeah. take this one out. It was words none of us would have ever thought of that they had proven were associated with masculinity. Mm -hmm.